Hello students hope you all are fine and safe today we are going to deal with lesson number 3 elements compounds and mixtures students these three words are not new for you but still let's revise again what they are but before that let's see the classification of matter matter is anything that has mass occupies space and can be perceived by our senses it is divided into pure substances and impure substances or mixtures pure substances are further divided into two parts elements and compounds elements for example iron gold hydrogen etc and example of compounds are water ammonia etc elements are again further divided into four parts metals these are lustrous they can conduct heat and electricity they are malleable and ductile and are sonorous which means can produce sound in nature next non metals these are the non lustrous substances which neither conduct heat or electricity they are non malleable and non ductile but are brittle which means breaks down when beaten in nature they are non sonorous example sulfur oxygen etc next metalloids these are special group of elements which shares some properties of metals and some properties of non metals example arsenic antimony etc at last noble gases these are the elements which are also known as inert gases as they don't react chemically with other elements or compounds they are only six in number and their names are as follows helium neon argon xenon krypton and radon mixtures they are of two types homogeneous mixture and heterogeneous mixture example of homogeneous mixture are salt solution sugar solution etc and example of heterogeneous mixtures are soil wood etc now what are pure substances a pure substance has a fixed composition means the substance with which it is made up of remains same for example sugar or salt pure substances are either compounds or elements a pure substance differs from a mixture in the following ways every sample of a given pure substance has exactly the same characteristic properties means suppose we are taking three samples of a single substance then if we check their properties it will be same every sample of a given pure substance has exactly the same composition their composition remains same for example water is always 11.2% hydrogen and 88.8% oxygen by mass now 
Let's define what is an element. An element is a pure substance which can't be split up into two or more simpler forms by chemical means. We cannot break up an element into two or more simpler forms by either physical or chemical process. For example, sugar is not an element as it can be broken down into carbon and water. Element, it consists of only one kind of atom. It can't be broken down into simpler type of matter by either physical or chemical means. Elements can exist as either atoms like argon or molecules like nitrogen. Can we call a substance as a compound if it contains only one atom? Can we call a substance a compound if it contains only one type of element or can we call a substance as a compound if it is not chemically combined obviously the answer to these three questions is no then what is a compound a compound is a substance which is made up of two or more elements chemically combined together in a fixed ratio for example water and ammonia gas now what are compounds actually they ca can be broken down into simpler type of matter by only chemical means it can't be done with physical means compounds has properties that are different from its component elements it means suppose we take an example of water it is made up of hydrogen and oxygen the property of hydrogen is to burn and the property of oxygen is to support burning but when they form a compound their property or its property becomes to extinguish fire compounds always contain the same ratio of its component atoms its ratio always remains constant now Let's take an example of this muddy water. Is it a pure substance? Obviously, the answer is no. It is a mixture. So, what is a mixture then? A mixture is a combination of two or more pure substances that are not chemically combined. it is made up of two or more pure substances but they are not combined chemically in any fixed ratio the substances held together by physical forces and not by chemical force no chemical change takes place in mixtures while formation of it each item retains its properties in the mixture likewise compound mixtures which contains its elements they show their own properties without losing it they can be separated physically now we have already read there are 
two types of mixtures one is homogeneous another is heterogeneous so let's see what are they homogeneous mixtures have a uniform composition throughout the mixture their composition remains same and uniform in the full mixture while heterogeneous mixture have a fixed composition which may vary from point to point from one point to another its composition may differ components are not visible to the naked eye we cannot see the components separately but in heterogeneous mixture we can easily see the components the whole mixture is in the same phase but in heterogeneous mixture the substances can be of two phases and layers may separate the particle size of homogeneous mixture is often at atomic or molecular level it may be atom or molecules present but in heterogeneous mixture the particles may be large in size the components cannot be separated easily in homogeneous mixture but in heterogeneous mixture the components can be separated easily now heterogeneous mixture is again of two types the first one is suspension what is it it is a heterogeneous mixture with big particles that settle out when left undisturbed liquids that need to be shaken well before using example oil and vinegar dressing muddy water muddy water is an example of homogeneous heterogeneous mixture so it is also known as suspension in this we can see after some time the bigger particles have come down and settled at the bottom of the container the second type of heterogeneous mixture is called emulsion emulsions are the mixtures of two immixable liquids in which both the dispersed phase and the dispersed medium are liquids it means it is a mixture of two immixable liquids the dispersed phase is the liquid that is present in a small amount in small droplets the dispersed liquid is known as the internal or discontinuous phase continuous phase is the liquid that is present in large amount and the continuous phase is known as the external or dispersion medium students i hope till this you have understood well and the next part of the chapter will be continued in the next video thank you stay safe